The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Not Steve Rhodes, Jacob Shoup. We're with you today. Steve Rhodes is on vacation. He will be back soon. Let's take a look at what we have going on. We're a little bit green today to the upside there. Um, ES futures up 0.26%, Russell up 0.43%, the NQ up 0.43%, Dow futures sideways. Gold's doing okay with the dollar getting depressed a little bit. Dollar's still trading pretty high at 104.53, um, but not at 105 like we were last week. Tesla, we will talk about that a little bit, up a whopping 7.35%. This comes regarding some of their um, supercomputer technology for uh, full self-driving vehicles. Apple moving up a little bit too after uh, the news that China was no longer going to allow officials to carry their phones. But we're still pretty low, especially from the high around 198.23. We'll see some recovery. There's already a lot of community, a lot of talk about there will be some kind of recovery regarding that. In big news, Twinkies, Hostess Brands, is being uh, purchased by Smuckers. Give me one second. I'll pull up the, uh, the ticker for you. So we might have jelly-filled Twinkies pretty soon, guys. Also, uh, I think Twinkies is the only, as a famous saying, Twinkies is the only snack that has a half-life due to some kind of radioactive thing in it. Anyways... Obviously, Smucker's are going to be down today because, you know, you got to finance purchasing uh, a company as large as Hostess. Um, quite a massive purchase of this, too. Valuation at $5.6 billion. Again, usually when uh, a company is buying another company, you're going to be purchasing it for a premium. Um, there's a large amount of finance to be done. So $5.6 billion, you know, that's a future projection uh, worth it. That's, that's uh, it's pretty intense. And we'll see too, you know, I should probably take a closer look as well on like the, the snack space and uh, whether or not, you know, what this bodes regarding. Uh, of course, there's tons of like snack companies, but obviously this is a massive merger of two snack companies. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with it. The deal is worth about $4.6 billion, excluding debt, uh, with Jif Peanut Butter, uh, maker Smucker paying host to shareholders $34.25 uh, a share. Uh, the cash and stock offer represents a premium of 54 percent uh, on the stock since the day Reuters reported. Let me see here. Gotta go. Obviously, this exploded as well, up 18.6 percent at 33.44. So, still under that mark there. Hostess shared have surged 27 percent since the report about the sale processes were up 19 percent at 33.49 uh, in early trading on Monday. While Smucker's shares were down 7% as investors viewed the deal as too expensive. That's also a component to it as well. Uh, Smucker said the deal, which is expected to close in the third quarter of its fiscal year, represents adjusted earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation. Okay, yeah, EBITDA. Of about 17.2 times based on its estimate of Hostess's brand's 2023 results. It's interesting. I mean, these are still like massive... Companies, I mean, I haven't eaten Hostess in, in years. I just, I try to be a little bit more health conscious regarding it, but there's nothing like a zebra cake. You know what I mean? It, it, it's nuts. Um, so massive deal moving forward with that. This, uh, this next stock I want to look at is Raytheon. And this is just sad. I, I mean, it's like my, my personal portfolio is just getting eviscerated with everything. I held Disney, I held Raytheon as well. Uh, <laughs> I mean, this is, I think this is almost like the cost basis too back from like March of 2020. Uh, so they take a three billion charge on Pratt and Whitney engine issues. Uh, so Pratt, this is some key points on it. Pratt and Whitney's parents said an engine manufacturing issue will hit its pre-tax results by three billion. Uh, RTX disclosed this issue in July. 
And the problem stems from a flaw in the powder metal used to make some of the engine parts. So Raytheon said, uh, well, RTX said Monday uh, that an engine manufacturing flaw forcing accelerated inspections will hit its pre-tax results this quarter by $3 billion, sending shares lower in the pre-market trading. Uh, obviously, it's from the powdered metal used. RTX said about 600 to 700 engines beyond the company's early forecast will have to be removed for shop visits through 2026. That's insane. The engines power many of the popular Airbus A320 neoplanes and others. Uh, the RTX, formerly known as Raytheon Technologies, reaffirmed its adjusted earnings estimate of 4.95, $4.95, to 505 a share for 2023, but it said it expects a $1.5 billion hit to cash flow in 2025, bringing the estimate to $7.5 billion from an early estimate of $9 billion. So... All these, even there was even issues with Lockheed and Martin, right? So a lot of these large companies, um, at least in, uh, you know, aeronautics and even in defense are getting hit kind of hard. This reminds me too, and for some reason, um, I don't know why this reminds me of this, but I want to pull up uh, this new cruise ship. Let me see here. This is from Royal Caribbean. Give me one moment as I like pull this up. It's called the Icon of the Seas. If you guys haven't seen this yet, you know, there was a big conversation, uh, the, how do you say, the, the cruise liners essentially took a massive hit during quarantine, and there was a lot of, uh, you know, I guess, unsurety about whether or not they're going to uh, re kind of respond positively, right, and kind of get back to where they were, and a lot of, I think I even made the comment uh, when I first started um, filling in for hosts, that not a lot of young people go on cruises, right, so kind of the... Uh, the main demographic for it is kind of getting phased out, you know, but Royal Caribbean, they changed my mind a little bit. Let's take a look here. They're releasing the Icon of the Seas, which is, I think it's going to sail January 24th, if I remember correctly, and this thing is insane. I mean, here, I'm just going to pull over quickly, and this is just kind of a side point, and, I, you know, I don't know how much I really like Royal Caribbean as a stock, uh, but they've done quite well, honestly, especially coming back from April 27th to uh, $60.00 up at the highest of 112.95 and trading just at 96, you know. And this was some pretty decent volume up to this push here. So, I might retest that level. This is this is the cruise ship. I mean, this thing has a mall in the middle. Uh, I mean, so many floors. I think it's like seven different pools. And I was talking with some friends about it who are roughly my age, if a little bit older. Um, and I mean, this would this would interest me. So I don't know. This might be a, a revival in the age of cruise ships and the. Uh, you know, coming decade or something like that. But regardless, I mean, that's just kind of a side point uh, that I thought was kind of interesting. Uh, and some further news as well, BMW is investing $750 million uh, to keep the Mini Cooper production in Oxford. Uh, quite an investment. Production of the three-door Mini Cooper and the Mini Aceman, which is a compact crossover, is due to begin at BMW's factories in Oxford and Swindon in 2026, the company said in a statement. And this site gears up to make only electric vehicles uh, from the end of the decade. They've obviously owned this brand since 94, um, but they want to keep it local in here, and that is quite the investment uh, to do that. It's safeguarding jobs of 4,000 workers, which is uh, an admirable thing on BMW's part. Folks, stay tuned. We will be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors C -c -c call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 all right welcome back everyone before we get to the big boy tesla uh, we'll take a quick look at Walmart. Um, nothing substantial happening right in the moment. Trading about 163.82 right now. Um, so pretty high for the year on the green. Um, the reason I'm bringing them up is because I read this article that they are doubling down in their stake in Africa, and particularly South Africa. Um, but in this company that they're uh, working with, which is Massmar, they, they bought an almost controlling stake in the company of 47%. Um, you know, that used to operate in a bunch of different countries, Nigeria, Tanzania, Uganda, so on and so forth, but they've since closed. So, so Massmar is, is flailing a little bit. And uh, Africa presents a really interesting challenge for a lot of these larger companies, um, mainly because logistics is very difficult there, right? The infrastructure isn't the best in most places. You have a large population of people so you would think that, you know, uh, you know, we got to sell to these guys. Um, obviously, wages are pretty difficult over there. Um, there's continuing instability uh, regarding their governments and whatnot. I mean, we just had some coups recently uh, near the Ivory Coast as well and in uh, Niger. And it looks that that might spread in some cases as well. But we'll see if that Nigerian coalition can kind of, you know, if, if essentially if... Uh, a group of the names eluding me of this of this coalition they have out there but if, if they can really kind of repress these regime changes and show that these areas in africa remain stable this might be an interesting market in the uh coming decade so anyways walmart invested in this company mass Mart, it's outside of south africa or it's, excuse me inside of south africa they bought a controlling stake i spent 2.4 billion dollars and it failed pretty heavily um Obviously, in 2014, there was a commodities crash and the pandemic, and now Ukraine is uh, influencing them very negatively. High inflation is there. Um, so in this article in Financial Times, it says after uh, years of lackluster sales in mid-2022, mass market shared had plummeted by about three quarters in 2011. and was far underperforming its peers in the South African retail sector. Despite the setbacks, Walmart chose to go all in. Uh, last year, it bought 47% uh, of the retailer that it didn't already own for $6.4 a South African rand, uh, the equivalent of about 358 million, and that's a fraction of what it shelled out for in the initial stake. 
So if there can be any kind of sign of instability in the coming you know, years, whoever has a foot in Africa right now um, could really you know, stand to benefit quite a bit. It reminds me a little bit of this company, Jumia. Uh, Jumia. It's German-owned, but it operated in Africa as well. And their whole... Yes, this is insane. I want to pull this up because they had this wild run up, $69. I mean, it's a, to- a classic pump and dump, right? And then petered into nothing. But they were supposed to be the um, Amazon of Africa. And whoever was pumping this uh, sold it pretty well. Uh, but And a lot of people lost out a bunch of money. I, there's so much volume, again, right in here, buying at this 35 mark. And everyone, you know, you could see how quickly this collapsed back down. Uh, and again, the issue is, is the infrastructure just isn't there. I was able to make some okay money in this sector, or excuse me, in this stock, um, but a lot of my other friends who were trading it, you know, got pretty knocked out. And the moral of that story is when you buy something at, you know, 30 bucks and it increases by <laughs> over 100%, sell the thing. Uh, don't stay in it and don't get greedy. That's what happens, right? All right, so let's move into Tesla. Trading at 8% right now for the day, which is a uh, massive move for a stock trading at, uh, you know, $268 or 200, you know, whatever, $40 to $8 it was before this. Let's get out of the five-year on that. Quite an impressive run-up on it. Still down a little bit from that 299 point. So what's happening? So the Tesla stock upgrade sees the FSD supercomputer adding a half trillion dollars in value. Uh, the stock received an upgrade in a 60% price target hike Sunday on the calculation that its FSD, which is full self-driving supercomputer, can boost the EV giant's value by half a trillion dollars. Morgan Stanley on Sunday upgraded Tesla stock to overweight, raising his price target, raising its price target to $400. In the 40-page report, um, this analyst from Morgan Stanley wrote Tesla's dojo, uh, the supercomputer built to train the company's FSD technology could play a key role in raising the company's valuation as much as $500 billion. And again, they can sell that to other companies or at least lease it out um, for a pretty significant profit. The, the way that these supercomputers train the models is, is nuts. I'm not going to pull up the video now, uh, but you can find it on YouTube. And... Um, uh, essentially, the, the case study they were doing is they were trying to train, uh, com- how do you say, computer game, like, AI, right? Like So, like, uh, opponents in the computer game of, of how to fight properly, right? And the way this, like, modeling works, and they added graphics to it, which was nuts, but it first starts off with, you know, this little character trying to stand, and it can't stand, and it falls down, and then it finally figures out how to stand after these iterations, and it keeps going and going and going, until, um, you know, you have this little character model that, um, you know, moves with such alacrity, essentially, right? And you don't have to spend all this time coding it in. It's far more dynamic. Um, They even had ones where uh, you'd have two teams, right? One was hiding and one was seeking, and the computer models uh, played each other. Again, they've added, like, a, you know, a graphic component to it so you can see it in real time, and it's not just, you know, raw data being spit out. Um, But the way these computers, like, learn how to think is, is insane, right? Where in the past, you would just essentially like static code the behavior, right? Well, you know, obviously, when the computer can learn, um, the output is far more dynamic and obviously evolves. And this is really, the, you know, the, the beautiful thing behind this kind of, you know, uh, machine learning. So anyways, Tesla has blown up regarding this. Um, obviously, at the time of this article being written, it was up 6.4%, but we're up 8.13%. We can see that run. Um, so yeah, you know, let's see, what is, this makes me think, I want to look up what ARC is trading at. This poor company, this is BlackRock here, but. I think it's ARKK, right? not know this. There we go. Yeah, and ARK Investments, even though Tesla's a large portion of that, is trading at 44, up 2% today, though. Interesting stuff. Meta, as well, up 2.47%. They have said, okay, again, I, I'm criticizing Meta a little bit recently, just because their stock sees such a 
large upward pressure um, only because they cut back on investments in other kind of industry, right? And I mean, I guess that's good, right? Because you're shoring up, not shoring up, you're uh, kind of increasing cash flow for other things. Uh, but a lot of things they've attempted have kind of failed. Uh, you know, their genomic sector failed. So they cut, you know, investment into that and the stock went up. Obviously, uh, the metaverse at this point failed. Um, so they cut investing into that. Uh, you know, maybe in the future, the metaverse will be fine. But right now, it's just a little bit too ahead of its time. Um, and the stock went up. Now, finally, they're coming out. Well, I didn't realize we're at the break here. We'll come back to it after the break. Um, but they are trying to make an AI language model to uh, rival ChatGPT. And so we'll discuss that a little bit uh, when we get back. Folks, stay tuned. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Before the break, we were talking about Meta. They're up a little bit today, right now, up 2.32%, about 304.84. So this comes out on mention that they are trying to compete with GPT-4, right? So they've been buying a lot of NVIDIA H100 training chips, um, and essentially they're trying to get into the market. Um, Google already has theirs that they're running. 
I like Google's a lot because it's it's personalized for the individual user, um, whereas ChatGPT really really isn't. And of course, it, it ChatGPT can it has memory of within a certain conversational string, which I think is cool. At least for ChatGPT four, I don't think that is really there for three point five and in such a fleshed out way. Um, but Google's just really hasn't gotten a lot of um, attention, which you know is fine. Um, as time goes on, I think these will become more competitive. I get concerned with Meta's, right? I mean, they're dumping millions of dollars, and obviously, you know, Meta has a ton of cash that they can pour into this. Um, Microsoft does as well, uh, but it'll be interesting to see how they really want to take um, ChatGPT, because you know, OpenAI is really just funded uh, essentially by um, Microsoft. Now, there is a there is a subscription you have to pay. Uh, for ChatGPT4, which I'm sure is really good for generation, but um, Meta is interesting because it's just within their company themselves. Um, so let's take a look here. This is, and this is the big issue, and this is really what I wanted to get the exact wording on this. Um, but they, they've reportedly dealt with heavy AI researcher turnover um, over computing resources, and that's split between their LLM project. It also faces heavy competition in the generative AI space we were talking about. And OpenAI um, obviously said it won't be working at Jet GPT-5, and Meta Daily is putting in millions of dollars. I just, I think, I've used Meta's kind of language model that you can interact with. They, they had it open, I don't know if it's still open right now, but they had something, I think, in June of this year. And I mean, it's not really that impressive compared to GPT-4, right? And it's like, what will they use this for, okay? They're, they have 30 accounts on Instagram, uh, that are meant to be mimicking real people. Um, and they said so far that nobody has really determined that it was an AI yet, which is fine, but I mean, what's the point of that? I mean, it, like, it's just weird thinking that like, as time goes on, these large companies might be like filling their, um, their platforms with kind of fake people and bots. And this is like a real thing that occurs, right? Where like a lot of bot, tra a lot of internet traffic, I think it's something like even exceeding like 60% is by bots, right? Um, and you have things like the dead internet theory, which suggests that it might even be higher, right? So a lot of things you might be interacting with um, on different platforms, such as Instagram uh, and, you know, and Twitter, might actually just be bots. So it's interesting to see what will happen with that. I don't know if they'll be able to compete in a meaningful way. I like Google's idea because they specialize more. Again, Google does this personalized uh, like assistant, right? So you talk with it constantly, you tell it what, it, what you do, uh, you know, you have a calendar with it, and it starts understanding your personality and can kind of um, d develop advice uh, based on that, which I think is uh, a pretty neat kind of thing. Google itself, like, moving forward with that pretty sideways today. Uh, they're preparing for an antitrust showdown. Um, so on Tuesday, a Washington courtroom will again become the focus uh, for historic Department of Justice effort to rein in one of the tech world's most powerful companies. Its complaint against Google is the first against the latest generation of dominant tech companies uh, to make it to court. Uh, the outcome, according to many legal observers, will be an important test of the ambitious legal strategy of U.S. regulators uh, and help to determine their wider efforts to rein in big tech. And, you know, I've watched, I watched the TikTok hearing in Congress. I, you know, and this is not that, but when you just, when you think about the government going up against these really cutting edge tech companies, you know, you think about these congressional hearings that happened with Meta, uh, that happened with Google, and that happened with TikTok. And the problem is, is a lot of our representatives uh, don't fully get it, right? And so what the meme that came from that really was, uh, you, you know, you'd get these sound bites of, you know, these, these Congress people, and they ask a question, and the, the, the problem is they really, I don't think, fully understand what they're asking, right? Like in the case of in the case of TikTok, right? They're like, if something is, if your device in your home is connected on the Wi-Fi and you have TikTok on one device, can it see other devices on the network? You know, this was memed and it's like, look what these guys are not talking, they, they don't understand what they're asking, they don't understand what they're talking about. And it's like, in the way that it works, it's like standard no, these other devices can't see each other um, if there's no permission granted. But is there a potential for it to? It's like, yes, there absolutely is. But the congressmen don't understand enough to kind of combat the answers from some of these big techs. So the question might be good, 
and uh, could potentially lead down, like, you know, uh, some line of discourse. Uh, but the problem is they don't understand enough. And it's not that they're asking, asking ignorant questions. It's just that they're ignorant on the good questions that they're asking. Um, so, you know, this is not a congressional hearing. This is this is more of a court situation in the DOJ. But still, um, you know, I, I get nervous with that kind of stuff uh, because these are the guys who are making you know laws and making decisions and setting precedents. So um, I think there should be a bigger push for more like tech literacy, at least in like legislative bodies and especially judicial bodies as well. So anyways, um, three years ago when the U.S. government first mapped out its legal campaign, many investors worried it would put a dent in Google profits. Uh, the stock market um, kind of responded similarly with that. Uh, many have since come to believe that the regulators were stretching uh, to hold the tech companies accountable for U.S. courts were unlikely uh, to back them. If Google prevails, there will be no changes in its business model, and the case will be particularly positive for other tech companies facing antitrust lawsuits. And, you know, obviously these things are huge as well and, and, and something to also look at regarding Google. Um, and I think Sindar, the, the current CEO, spoke about this during his congressional hearing. But they, there was a time, and it was like in 2014 or something like that, but they were working with the Chinese government to create a search engine. It was, I think it was called Project Dragonfly. Um, and they obviously came under massive fire for that because Google has become so prominent because of the societal and, uh, I guess, enterprise kind of standards in America, and they're working with a country that would definitely put censorship on some searches. And there's not a lot of combo what like, really came out of that, but it was brought up, uh, at least in the congressional hearing. Just so a little bit of Google overview today uh, of what's going on. Disney itself is coming back a little bit. There's some kind of discussion going forward with Comcast to figure this uh, whole issue they have out, obviously. Um, their troubles with the Florida government still persists, but I think we're seeing a little bit of a bump today uh, because they are offering Disney Plus subscriptions for $1.99 for a limited time. I don't know if that really even matters on the long term, right? And I think they might have made a mistake trying to do their own streaming company. Again, all these large tech companies were trying to get in and really like outcompete. Maybe they would have made more money um, kind of licensing this out to something like Netflix or like Hulu, uh, but it's hard to say. And obviously they made the decision that they made um, and they uh, currently are not doing well because of it. Folks, stay tuned, we will be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. 
Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. 
First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Hey, sorry about that, folks. We were having um, some technical difficulties, but we were back. Um, before the interruption, we had uh, we were speaking about uh, Disney and their issues with Charter. And during the show, they actually have reached a deal. So obviously, this is Charter Company. Uh, I'll just pull this over because it's such fresh news. Uh, Charter Communications and the Walt Disney Company, which is hours left until the Monday Night Football season, have resolved a 10-day long dispute that left Spectrum cable subscribers without ESPN, FX, and other Disney-owned channels. Uh, 18 Disney-owned networks plus local ABC stations in several major markets uh, went black for Spectrum customers on September 1st. Uh, the charter, the second largest cable operator in the U.S., contended that as companies uh, such as Disney put more focus on resources into streaming platforms content, uh, the value of the linear channel's product has vastly declined. And as more and more TV consumers, quote, cut the cord uh, and defect to streaming, that those who leave, uh, excuse me, that leaves those who don't to foot higher bills. And so this is true. And uh, again, I would say, like, no matter what Charter is really doing, unless they have just some spectacular left field kind of response to this, um, that within the next generation, uh, I mean, Charter, this kind of cable streaming is, is dead. I mean, look, I can't even say it it without the word streaming, right? That just goes to show. So still no real bump up on Disney's end from that uh, information, but anyways, that we were bringing you the uh, news here at TFNN, so it was worth saying. Baba as well today has experienced whew, quite a drop. Uh, essentially, uh, the CEO, Daniel Zhang, uh, quit two months after concentrating his efforts on cloud computing, raising concern over the unit's spin-off plan and possibility of discord at the top. Uh, the new group CEO, Eddie Wu, will concurrently become acting CEO and chairman of the unit, grappling with weak sales growth ahead of initial public offering uh, penned uh, for next year. Essentially, the CEO left, and uh, it took quite a big hit for them. Uh, folks, stay tuned. We will be right back.
If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we have a short segment here. Take a look on around the markets, uh, sideways to green, NQ doing substantially well, the Tesla there. Uh, copper has rebounded today with some bettering news regarding uh, the renminbi in China. Silver up 0.61%. Gold kind of flat as well. Tesla is running almost at 10% up today, which is pretty impressive. Um, Put this on your radar too, keep out. We like talking about some cybersecurity stuff here and just in the world of, of scamming as well uh, and how to kind of protect yourself from it. Uh, you know, this is from July, but it has in this frequency has increased. Um, you know, and these scammers utilize, you know, new technology, uh, they utilize, um, you know, disastrous events. So, like, you know, Ukraine war and what's going on in Morocco. And this headline is scammers are using AI voices to mimic the, excuse me, using AI to mimic the voices of loved ones in distress. And I've heard some of these calls and, uh, you know, it's, it's insane. I mean, it, you know, it sounds like a person, I obviously don't know what their voices sound like, but it sounds like a person who is in, uh, you know, trouble. And they're calling usually older family members uh, asking for something like, I need $2,000, I need so on and so forth, I need you to put it here. Um, and that's... Uh, you know, pretty insane. And I would keep in mind too, like these guys are always figuring out ways to try to trick you. This is obviously uh, pretty advanced, but um, in a class that I had um, with some computer science and cybersecurity in particular, we had to develop phishing emails. And uh, the one that I developed for my assignment uh, essentially was, it was kind of like a spam email, right? Um, but it 
you know, it seemed legitimate. It wasn't trying to get you to do anything, but at the bottom I had, I would send it frequently, and at the bottom I had, uh, if you don't want these emails, click here to unsubscribe, right? And that was the phishing link. So you have to be very, uh, you know, careful and very vigilant um, when, you know, you're being presented with these kind of things, right? Obviously, this is, this is pretty extreme, um, but as tech gets better and uh, more people can get their hands on it, uh, you know, the more frequent these kind of scams will become. Folks, thank you so much uh, for tuning in. I will be with you tomorrow uh, for Tommy's show. Um, again, thank you uh, for staying tuned after that uh, technical difficulty. And we have uh, Larry up at 1 p.m. Thank you.